Hi there. I felt like it was necessary to address this in a video because this is where most of you find me and I didn't want this to be brushed under the carpet. In the description, I've attached a statement. Um, you can check it out for the full details, but in summary, going forward, I will not be covering the entries from Israel or Azerbaijan. Uh, this is a position that I'm going to be taking indefinitely as well, and again, you can look at the statement if you want the full explanation for why. Now, I want to acknowledge that I realize that this is not like a big gesture, and coming from me, who is you know, a, a creator with a modest following uh, who doesn't cover every country in general, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as it would coming from a larger outlet that does cover every country. The reason why I wanted to address this is because we know that a lot of outlets are not covering Israel, at least, and they haven't said why. And I'm doing my best to remember that there might be reasons that I haven't considered. But the problem with not speaking up, not making it clear as to why they haven't covered Israel at least, is that it allows for people to fill in the blanks. And when I try and think of the reasons why people would not cover that entry, but then not say anything about it, I don't have any good reasons that come up. The only ones that I can think of are that they're avoiding controversy or they're worried worried about losing their audience, losing subscribers, followers, so on and so forth. Most of you probably know that lately there's been a lot of criticism directed at the artists. And the fact that that's happening is a big problem. They are the heart and soul of this show. It's their work that people come to watch and vote on. They have enough to worry about as it is in any given year. They should not be having all this additional pressure being put on them for participating, especially because it's not as if Eurovision is being hosted in Israel this year, because if it was, then I would think it would be a completely different story. Now we've seen the EBU try to deflect the blame off the artists and onto them as, as a means of like saying, you know, it's not their fault. The problem, however, is that, like, one, I just don't think that a statement is going to really deter the people who are overzealous, who don't understand the difference between activism and harassment. It also, you know, glosses over the fact that there are very likely people who are engaging in these social media campaigns maliciously and are trying to undermine, you know, a real, a real political struggle. But the bigger problem is that no amount of explaining and justifying is going to undo the six months of horrific images that millions of people have seen. And the reason why they've seen it in such excruciating detail is because the Palestinians who are going through it have been trying to appeal to our humanity to make it stop. And they've gotten nowhere. And so when you see things like a quote in The Guardian from Martin Oosterdahl saying, we are not the arena to solve a Middle East conflict. Tell that to Israel, because they seem to think so. For three minutes, they're going to get their opportunity to get the world to focus on their pain. And in fairness, that pain that was inflicted on the Israeli population on October 7th is real and deeply tragic. But it is far from the whole story. People have every right to be furious about this. Every right. And if we're going to play this game where it's, it's claimed that Eurovision is an event that happens between broadcasters and not governments, but ignore the fact that it was government intervention that made it possible for this song to be here, because Khan was going to accept disqualification. It wasn't until Israel's president had intervened. Israel's president, by the way, is one of the elected officials that's named in South Africa's case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. He's one of the examples of an elected official who has expressed genocidal intent. You can't say that that's not political. And so it doesn't matter if all of this is within the rules or if the direct references to October 7th have been sanitized from the song. They're deliberately bringing something that's going to unearth all these feelings on the stage. And so if we're going to keep up this facade about Eurovision being a non-political event, then you better be prepared for people to call that out when it is very clearly being politicized. For as long as Israel is facing charges of genocide, they should not be participating. 
With respect to Azerbaijan, my justification is the fact that they have ethnically cleansed Nagorno-Karabakh, but they've also been caught cheating twice. And keeping them around, we're just waiting for them to cheat again. Get Israel and Azerbaijan out of Eurovision.